Hey everyone, JP here. And I wanted to give you a little tour of our garden and things that are growing right now. And I wanted to start with this little rose first because it may appear white, but it's actually a gold, gold metal rose. And the reason I want to start with this is because it was looking kind of puny and, and not feeling well and, and not doing very well. But with a little care and some attention and um, some appropriate trimming, as well as feeding and you know, a good amount of rain and watering, um, it's actually blooming. Now, I bought this, this little rose at, at Aldi this year. I bought this one at Aldi last year. And as you can see, it's doing really well. It likes its spot very much. I bought this one over at Aldi as well last year. And it's doing okay. You know, just other than the regular stuff, we've got to take care of it. This one back here is a climbing rose that somebody gave to me. So I'm starting with the roses because um, it's important that we think about what gardens do for us and what they represent. There's been a lot of talk about what to pay attention to during the whole COVID experience and, and what we're dealing with now and the 4IR and the Great Reset and all that. And so I wanted to show you our garden while I talked about that. Growing a garden is important. These are all flowers, they're not vegetables, but the flowers bring the the, uh, the bugs that do all the uh, pollination, right? You've got, we have wasps and native bees and honeybees and bumblebees. And these are marigolds. And like we said in one of our things, marigolds keep the squash bugs away. So we have some of those in the back with the squash. We also have radishes. Radishes actually do, do just as good, a better job. And we've got sunflowers. And these bring the beautiful goldfinches. There's a California poppy. Over here I had a whole bunch of these. The California poppies were all over this bed. They've died back a little bit. They get really leggy and long, and so they were like all over this, hanging all over the place. And they were all, they were all dead through this area here, and then there were flowers out here. And this looked really bad, so I, I always cut them back around this time of year to revitalize the plants and clean up the bed. And so you can see I just put fresh mulch down. So we're gonna have poppies again pretty soon. They're, they're growing and you know, by autumn we'll have a nice white patch of orange poppies again. And we've got some dahlias coming in. There's another sunflower here, happy to be here. These are all lilies here, I mean, sorry, irises here. These are white iris all growing here. This daisy just came up on its own volition, volunteer. I leave those things if they're nice. Parking sign growing. Got to water that. Uh, some more marigolds, kind of just kind of voluntarily coming in, and we've got some other um, wildflowers coming in. So, I'm gonna look at these sunflowers again. Somebody um, recently was talking about, you know, about how it's important to do one thing as opposed to something else, and. That one thing was basically follow somebody else. As I said, and I have to disagree, you know, because here, as we say, no heroes. No heroes. Here at Blue Flowers, Julie and I talk about you know things that you can do, but we certainly don't expect you to treat us like, you know, we are the be-all and end all. We just give advice. We give our opinion. You don't have to agree with it. But this alternative uh, viewpoint was met with, you know, the typical blocking. And this viewpoint was basically saying, you know, well, what about 
by the way, here's this is all weeds before, and I just recently put this all this uh, um, mulch in. <laughs> There's a big pile of mulch still in our backyard. I, I've got to figure out what to do with it. I ordered way too much. Let's see. This is just a little bit of labor and some love, and, and I put this in. It's going to keep the weeds down. It looks neat. There's really not much grows back here. I've been thinking about putting uh, maybe some some uh, I don't know, some ferns or something like that, or hydrangea. I don't really like hydrangea, <laughs> but they grow well in the shade. So maybe that. Um, but this is the foundation of the house next to ours. So we, we have to kind of take care of that. Um, over here is what this probably looked like before. I've got this, this pallet that I need to get rid of. And all these weeds, and there's a bunch of bricks that were left here from previous people. There's actually a, this, this was actually bricked over this path here, so I'm gonna get that cleaned up. And just put some more mulch in here. Okay, but without this kind of work, you know, this is what the place looks like. And so you have to put the uh, time and energy into something to make it nice and make it something that you prefer to be around. So as opposed to the chaos, you know, this is a little monoculture looking, but it's certainly easier to deal with than a bunch of weeds overgrowing the, the place. Some of the weeds I like to leave in place, like, like these guys, I have no idea what these are. They grow everywhere. I've asked people what they are, nobody knows. You know. um, but I've even cut these and put them in water and put, you know, put them on our porch. They're really nice, I like them a lot. So these are what you would call weeds that I leave in place. Um, this is a, a non-native species that I don't know what it's called, I forget what it's called, but it, crows everywhere and it was brought over by uh, the, North, the, uh, the English uh, colonists and uh, allegedly the uh, Native Americans called it the, the white white footprint or something like that because it's like no matter where you go it, it just like it, it follows you <laughs> but you the young greens you can use in salads and, and you can, or you can uh, boil the, the bigger ones in like a soup or something so um, so back to what we were talking about with like, you know, how the things you should be focusing on and the person that was making the commentary said, you know, focus on gardens, focus on, you know, getting uh, maybe some alternative uh, monetary funds in place like, you know, metal, like silver and gold or, or even if you're into it, you know, uh, some sort of uh, digital currency, which, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Um, I'm, I'm wary of it, so I'm not, you know, going out and investing in that necessarily, but, you know, and if you have some money, some spare money, you, you can put into some smaller pieces of silver or gold, it might be worth your while. But the important thing is, is that something that Julie and I were talking about a moment ago, this, so this is our, this is called a veggie pot. And it's, it's on wheels. <laughs> it's a garden on wheels. The only problem is, is um, it's been very hot lately, and so this, this soil gets warmer than it usually would. And so everything's just bolting. So this is our arugula, and it's just bolting. This is our lettuce, and it's bolting. So it's hard to keep it from doing that. I have to cut it back all the time. Now it looks like it's starting to dry out, so that's not a good thing. I might have to pull these out and just put more basil in here. And just make this a basil garden. By the way, speaking of basil, this is Thai basil back here that's been sprouting. I grew it from seeds. It's been a long, arduous journey with them. I mean, if you've been somebody who has been living um, and with a career and, and depending on that, that paycheck and, and, and that career has fed you and, and, and you know, Kept you working and and all that. That's that's fine. It's just that you have to ask yourself: Does that career, does that job define you? Is that what you define yourself as? That that type of work. Good here. 
We got carrots. If so, you might be in a big trouble in the future because things are changing rapidly. I had a 20 plus year career as a designer and that career got taken away from me. Maybe we got some tomatoes. But the only thing that it really did to me is, is just make it hard for me to like make a living. I had to do other things to make money. And the thing is, is I've always been an artist. It's, that's more or less how I would define myself. So over here, this is like super sunny and hot over here. And our eggplant is supposed to be thriving and flourishing. It's not doing so well. These are padron peppers that are not doing so well. But the tomatoes are volunteers and they just love it. The beans over here are not so happy. It's a little hot for them. These guys are doing a little bit better. There's a makeshift bird bath down here. The wasps like it, they land on it. And they got it. But I've always been an artist and I've always been a gardener. And so I've always relied on my skills as somebody who knows how to use materials and manipulate materials. And whether that's building something or repairing something or making something, I've relied on that ability to you know, work with my hands. That's well, not something I'm going to do for a living, but it's something that helps me do what I love. And that is, in this case, you know, this is a garden that we, we use to feed ourselves. So here's all the mulch that I've got to find a place for. It's all over here, and then it's going to be spread out further, like, you know, underneath. The whole point of it is to prevent, well, dandelions. It's not that I don't like dandelions, it's just they take over. And it makes it hard. I'm always pulling them up as a result, because they're just in the way of an area that I don't really want to have dandelions in. Now, over here, I've got more of these wildflowers. The dandelions can come in, they're fine. They're fine. I've got, <laughs> got lots of garbage back here. The garbage has not been picked up. So, I'll get to that narrative in a moment. When I finish doing the, uh, the mulch, I'll put the birds, bird feeder back up. Over here we've got sunflowers and the king of sunflowers up here. This is probably a good 10 feet tall. <laughs> and over here on this side, I think we've got some cone flowers still in bloom. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. So it's, it's important to not let your job define who you are because if you do, I don't know if you'll know what to do with yourself after it goes away. Julie and I have had our careers and our jobs taken away multiple times. We've had to reinvent ourselves over and over and over again. So it's important to understand how to do things outside of maybe your, even your wheelhouse. Maybe do things outside of your career. Understand how to take care of yourself. Now there's a narrative going around about how there's so many jobs out there and people aren't taking them because there's, uh, they're getting unemployment and the unemployment is, is, is paying them more money than, than the job would. And that may be the case because a lot of these jobs are just shitty um, fast food jobs. Here's some potatoes that I'm growing in this greenhouse. And some of them are, are jobs like picking up the trash. The trash company has told us that they can't send somebody out. This, this trash has not been picked up in, in two weeks. And it was all, it's all over the alley. Every, every neighbor has their, their trash out. These people had their trash removed on their own. So, oh, good for them. Um, ours, we, you know, we, uh, I play, we don't generate that much garbage, so whatever. I'll put out my trash can. But the narrative is, is that they don't have enough drivers to... to to, uh, to help them get the, the trash picked up, which I find hard to believe because they had people that during the entire time of COVID 
and now you're telling me you don't have drivers? What, did they all quit so that they could get unemployment? That doesn't sound likely. Did you fire them? I don't think so. But it fits within that narrative, and, it, and I have a feeling that, they're, that this is something that they're doing to support that narrative that's going on. And it's just more fuckery from the, the, uh, the mainstream media and the establishment and the established businesses that are saying all this shit to support a narrative that's probably, that's really not true. Here's Roxy. She's hiding under the, the wheelbarrow. She likes it there. It's shady. Hi, Roxy. Hello. Here's some basil. So it's so important to be engaged with your community, but also be able to take care of yourself. Because if the community isn't what you're about, then you're going to have a few problems. I don't know what this is. That's pretty wild. Okay. Um, but when the community's there, and in the same camp as you are, then you can share resources and you can work together and trade and you know, go back to that video that we made called uh, uh, God, what is the name of it? <laughs> well, it's not coming to me but it, it shows up at the end of, of Lifelong Learning and we made it into its own uh, video so we got birds out here on the fence they're, 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 they're eating they're not starving, so I don't really need the bird feeder out right now. You know, the garden is keeping them fed. Because there's lots of insects that they can eat, and lots of stuff that's, that's, that's around that they can eat. Anyway, it's about abundance. What brings you abundance? Is it that paycheck? Or is it something that you do for yourself? What can you do for yourself that you can turn into a way of making a living? Julie and I are artists. We've always been artists. And it's come down to the fact that that's the only way we're going to survive. Now, I'm not putting people down for having a 9-to-5 job. I'm not doing that at all. I had one for years. That was taken away from me. So for those of you who are still working, I'm saying keep that job. Do it. If it's your passion especially, definitely do it, but don't let it define you. But if you are fi making money out there, see if you can send a little along to us because we work through subscriptions and through donations and through tips. We're not making paintings that people can just buy from the wall, on the wall in a gallery. We're making videos, we're doing interviews, we're doing anything we can to, you know, bring people in and, and, and interest them and, and talk to, you know, get, get some information. We've been hearing from people that we're informing them, giving them brain food, and the ones who appreciate it give back. So if you, would, if you appreciate the work that we do, we'd appreciate it if you gave back too. Uh, you know, it's a suggestion. It's not an order. But we're like any sort of media uh, place. We're like any sort of radio station or magazine. We depend on your support to keep us working. So with that, I'm going to close the, the veggie pod. Come back out here and water later. And it's a little cooler. But let's see, we've already got some tomatoes ripening. Mm -hmm. here. See that or not? And I think there's some little baby cucumbers yet right there. Um, I've had to spray the, the cucumbers because they've got something. It's just basically like a fungus kind of thing. So, but the top is looking good. So, neem oil. Neem oil does the trick. It's good stuff. It makes things feel healthy. And in fact, that little red, yellow rose that I started the video with, neem oil helped pull it through. Alright, well that's about all I have to say. Thanks. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.